how to invoke a stored project in SQL Server. That is what we are going to look at it. And first of all, what is a stored project? Stored project will contain the collection of SQL statements. These, since these, you know, SQL state, once you execute the stored project, these queries that are part of this procedure will get compiled. Okay, hence it is pre-compiled. Uh, once you create a stored procedure, you can reuse it as many times as you want it. It is something like create once, use it as many times as you want it. For example, you want to prepare a favorite dish. Okay, you don't have to buy each and every ingredient nowadays. Okay, ready mix is available, right? And if you go to the shop and uh, you, for example, you want to, you know, prepare a noodles, ready mix is available. You go and buy it and what you need to just put it in a, in a bo boil the water and put it there and probably you can add a little bit uh, salt. And if you want a um, little bit spicy, right, put some chili powder, that's it. You don't have to buy the vermicelli or you don't have to you know you don't have to fry that you don't have to do anything right readily available it's something like create once use it as many times as you once you buy a ready mix you can use it as many times as you want it right it's something like um let's say in your house right they prepared the ice cream if it is once they prepared the ice cream you can use it as many times as you can, right? Create once, use it as many times as possible. You don't have to have the headache of every day create it. At least you can keep the ice cream uh, in the freezer. You can use it for at least three to four to five days, right? And you can give it to kids or friends. It's something like an already mix. Once you create a stored procedure by implementing all the necessary logic, you can reuse it as many times as you can, as you can. Hence, uh, you know, there's a kind of uh, modularity and it will improve the productivity of your team, okay? For example, <clears throat> I have a sales table. I have a sales table. In the sales table, I, you know, I have something called sales summer. Whenever my manager wants to, the data gets added on a daily basis in the sales table. If he wants to see the average sales on a daily basis, along with that, he wants to see the total sales, average sales, and minimum sales, maximum sales, and median sales. Every day you ask. In that case, you don't have to write the query like this on a daily basis. You can put it in a stored procedure. All you need to do is execute the SQL, this stored procedure. It will give you the summary information on a daily basis also, okay? For example, here, uh, the, yeah, to define the stored procedure, this is the syntax in your SQL query create procedure, procedure name. The procedure name can be anything, but it should be meaningful name. So here, the purpose of the stored procedure is you want, whenever I call this procedure, you should give me the summary, the sales summary, okay? Summary in the sense, minimum sales, maximum sales, average sales, total sales, it has to give, okay? So in that case, every day, I don't have to execute a query. Simply, I have to type exec get sales summary. Every day, I'm going to do this one only. It gives me the summary data. Okay, so in this case, it is reusable, right? You don't have to have the headache of rewriting the query on a daily basis. Redundantly, you don't have to write. It reduces the redundancy. And since it is a pre compile it improves the performance. And there is a modularity, okay? With this procedure, you can compute the summary of the sales. Very good. So here, uh, the, this, uh, the syntax is create procedure, procedure name. And the second one is, the next one is the argument. You can specify the parameter, argument or parameter. This is all called the parameter. And in this case, I've commented this one, double hyphen if you put it. So I don't need this one. If you want, you can use it, okay? But parameter, also we can use it. In general, in stored pressure and stored function, use parameter, okay? But the difference between stored pressure and um, stored functions, in the case of um, stored pressure, you can use the input parameter and also you can define the output parameter. Anyhow, just understand at the 100 feet high level. Don't understand everything from the uh, beginning itself at a deeper level, you will get confused, okay? This is syntax and as is a reserved word, begin. Begin and end. Inside the begin end, we need to write the body of your stored pressure. You need to implement the logic here, okay? This is the kind of header. This is your body, okay? Begin and you know inside this block, you can specify your logic. Okay, now what I do is I'm going to 
create the stored procedure. Okay, this procedure got created. Okay, commands completed successfully. Compilation time, everything is fine. So here I use the declare to find the variable and each variable uh, along with each variable specify the data type. And money is kind of a fixed decimal number. And uh, each variable, to define a variable, you need to use the reserve word called declare. And uh, followed by you need to specify the variable. And each variable name should start with the at symbol. Okay. And I define the data type and the select at total sales equal to sum of sales sum of from sales table. In that case, what will happen is in the sales table, there is a column called sales sum of. It performs the to, you know, it computes the total sales and then assign that value into this variable. Similarly, it computes the average sales sum of in the sales column and, uh, you know, store it in this variable. And finally, what it is, I'm going to use a select query and to query the variable here. Whatever the value is stored in the variable, you can get it as an output, okay? And now I have, uh, look here, if I execute this one, what is going to happen? And uh, the sales table should be there here. Let me check if the sales table is available here or not. It's very good. The sales table is available here. So what I will do is for you guys to understand, I'm going to execute the select star from. Sales table. You can use select star also. Star tells us display all the columns. Select star from sales. Okay. And here you can see the sales amount column. Right. And what I do is I'll just put go here. Go, I'll explain you later. So first it gives me the summary of all the things. So what, you know, here it gives me the total sales, average sales, right? And uh, this is what your total sales, 1,600. If you count it, can you get uh, 1,600? Yes, 700, 800, 1,000, 1,600. These are total sales. What is the average sales? If you add all these six values divided by 1,600 divided by six, how much you'll get? Mm, right, so 266, correct. So average sales. Every day, you don't have to do the calculation manually. See, to calculate the average, it took time, right? To add the total sales, it took time. But with this simple stored pressure, if you execute it, it can tell you, hey, this is the total sales we made, and this is the average sales we made. And if you want to have the minimum sales, also you can have it something like this. For example, you can copy paste this and uh, put max of sales amount and store it in a variable called at max sales. And from sales, and again, comma, max sales, comma, min sales. So this one will give you the everything here, okay? So you can use the stored project for that purpose, or reusability purpose, okay? But uh, this is not the classic example for us to use it in the this thing. For example, I want to use the same thing, okay? Let me do one thing. For, for you to understand what is the advantage of stored procedure, right? This one advantage using the short procedure, okay, to implement the reusability and reduce the time in terms of uh, computing the total sales and everything every now and then, right? So for that purpose, we have used it. Okay, let me do one thing. Where is that query that I wrote it earlier? It, it got disappeared. You can click on this one and you can find uh, the 55, 56, Uh, this is the one I used it previously, okay? And here, I'm going to write the stored procedure here, okay? And for that, I just go here, and I'm going to I could have mentioned here itself, okay. P name, product name, 
And here I'm going to say where care of. The data type is the character type. I'm using something called where char. It's a character data type. Okay. I'll explain you what is the different care and where char as uh, the begin and end. Okay. I'm going to use begin end. There is a syntax error here. Okay, here uh, procedure create procedure procedure name and then the 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 parameter name as begin end and here the okay comma I mentioned comma here you need to remove the comma because I have used only one parameter right and here what I am going to do is where uh, product ID and um, let's you know uh, the p dot product name. is equivalent to, I just say at P name. Group by end, okay. And uh, the next one is, This uh, stored procedure got executed. Now we need to test it whether it is working fine or not. And here, what I do is I just go here the stored procedure name. Uh, once you create the stored procedure, you have to use it, isn't it? You need to use it. So how do you use it? You need to call it. Okay, create exec. You know, there is a command called exec, or you can use the execute. Followed by that, you need to use the stored procedure name. If you click on it, it will throw an error. Okay. The parameter which was not supplied here, you need to specify the product name. Uh, what is the product name here? It is um, product A, right? Uh, in this case, um, what products we have it? We have the coffee and tea, right? C-O-F-F-E, -E, something like that. Where is that one here? I have used yeah. I'm going to close it. This is not helpful. 59 is not helpful. And I'm going to close this one also. And uh, okay, not this one. And so yeah, here only I've used it. Look here. Followed by this, I'm going to say coffee. So what is happening here? So I have created a stored procedure. Create procedure, procedure name. The parameter, worker P5. So in the body, what I did, I used the same query. But uh, I have written an additional line here. Okay, And P dot product name is equivalent to the parameter P name. Hence, it will be very dynamic. And how do I execute the query? Exec the stored procedure name, how to execute the stored procedure, this is how, okay, execute, followed by your stored procedure name and the parameter, value for this parameter, okay, you need to pass this one and this one, the coffee will get copied here and then this one will get copied here. So in this query will return how much sales we made in coffee. If you don't specify, it will throw an error because you need to supply some value for this thing because you have defined the parameter. Had you not de de you know, declared anything here, you don't have to supply any value. Now, this one seems to be very dynamic. Okay. So, what I am going to do is in this case, it returns only one row. In our case, uh, what I am going to do is, uh, yeah, I'm going to remove some here. Yeah, sorry. I should have used this one. I, I should have used that other query, the first query which I used it, right, to execute that one. And here uh, I'm going to use uh, the P name, uh, okay, product name. Okay, here I don't have to use this one also. For example, I'm going to remove this one also, same query, okay. Create short version, simple one. Mm, okay, here it, since it is already available, it says the short version is already there. And you need to drop the short procedure or you can use the alter command okay 
you don't have to drop and recreate the stored procedure. So try to recreate the same procedure again. It says that you know thing is already available. Sorry, here I execute it. Stored procedure, and all I need, I don't need coffee also because I did not use any parameter. This one will give me the output of the entire thing. Okay. So this time I'm going to use only this command in my. I implemented all the logic, whatever I wanted here itself in my stored procedure. All I have to do is go to the Power BI desktop and click on the SQL server. And then in the advanced options, I'm going to use this one. And I start with the import option. I just uh, go to the notepad, they pick up the server name, and then I'll put it here and demo DB. See, it's pretty simple. But if you in the real life scenario, when you see the stored project, it will be something like this. So many lines will be there. Look here. So many lines will be there. All the logic. The simple example is look here. You want to find out the gross net salary. So in this case, you have written a stored procedure. So here you need to check uh, the salary is less than or equal to some value, put some tax rate. If the salary falls uh, in a specific uh, slab, what is the tax rate? Compute it and return the net salary. So you put all the logic here. But end of the day, you are going to just, you know, you call the stored procedure. That's all. But here you specify some value for the parameter. In this case, I did not use any parameter. I'm going to call the stored procedure from the Power BI desktop. That's it. Look here. That stored procedure got executed. The output of the stored procedure returned this much of records. I'm going to hit load. Sorry, not that much record. That was just a preview. Okay. Now I believe you are able to understand how to invoke a stored procedure, right? So where is that one? The query three must be that one. Look here. Coffee, right? So coffee appears from this. Just to give me the transfer. But in this case, um, we have joined the two tables. In this case, we have joined the two tables. You don't have to have the headache of joining the two tables separately. Okay. The, the dim product sales table. But in real life scenario, you'll be joining multiple tables, multiple columns, you'll be using it. You'll be using inner join for two tables and the, and the inner join, the output of the inner join, you'll be doing it with a left outer join with another table and that output of that one, you'll be doing a right outer join and something like that or left hand join, something like that. We'll be using a complex query here for you to understand in a very simple way. I've used this thing. Okay. So with this example, hope you are able to understand what is a stored procedure, how to create a stored procedure, what is the syntax for the stored procedure, and how to call the stored procedure in a SQL server. You had to, you understood at a high level, but still you need to practice it uh, in a very detailed way. And also I have demonstrated how to call or invoke the stored procedure which you have created it. Uh, I demonstrated in both in SSMS or as well as in the Power BI desktop how to call the stored procedure I've shown you. Okay. Hope um, you're able to understand how to invoke the stored procedure. We have taken a detailed.